imagine I've ever seen my signature bigger. Yeah, you're like a founding father. <laughs> Here we go. We have our sheet music to our song Birds of a Feather from our new album Hit Me Hard and Soft and we're gonna break it down for you a little bit. There's a lot of songs about dying for somebody and loving them till they die, and I thought it was really fun to so lean like reverse and be it. like, no, literally though, till I die for real, and I'm in the grave, and and I'm and I'm rotting away. <laughs> There's a line I don't know if you should use this or whatever, but like the first lyric we wrote was I want you to stay, and then I have some lyrics in here which are like all kind of just loving. We were like, oh, we'll make a love song for the first time that's like doesn't have some sort of weird twist to it, and then we were like, we twisted it. We twisted it. We were coming up with all these rhymes, and grave came up, so it kind of was already this like happy sounding thing, and then we just always loved the juxtaposition of that with the lyrics. Here's the thing with music. My whole thing is that it's for the listener to decide what it means. And doesn't matter what I wrote it about, what Phineas wrote it about, it's like, it really doesn't matter as long as you interpret it however you need to. That's all you need to know. So don't take what I say to heart, but it's almost like someone like slamming you into a wall and being like, you look really pretty. And you're like, wow, that's really a lot. That's what I wanted the verse to do. I wanted it to feel like toxic and a little bit like love bombing. <laughs> I have a hard time with the first lyrics or like the first time I am heard in a song because it's like the most important part to me. So I will spend like days and days and days trying to get the right take of the first line. This was probably the most challenging out of the entire album to sing. I'm so specific about what notes I'm doing, and so even though they feel like I'm just going, I want you to stay, I'm like, da 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 da. I want you to stay. And it has to be those da. Stay. It's not, ha, ah, it's not like a like little slide, it's like two oh. notes. But um, this was not a happy album, like literally at all. This is how I wished that I was feeling, and I wasn't really, but I was like, I'm just gonna <laughs> try to pretend. Notes, y'all. Actually, well, there's like a couple that are not there. Hold on. Birds of a feather. Wow, careful. This pre chorus, so tough. Such a darn disaster. <laughs> Might be a good time for me to pop this open for a second. Birds of a feather, we should stick together. I know I said it never. Uh. Think so the thing that's really cool about that is over top of that second chord in the progression, which is the B minor, we had her do this like real jazz. So it's my favorite does part. like a minor. I said I'd never think I wasn't better alone. When I was touring, I would I never did a singing lesson. I would never never even did a vocal warm up. I never really did a vocal warm. I would do like five minutes of like lip trills. You know, your voice is truly like an instrument, and if you work on it and you train and you practice, you actually can strengthen it and actually get better. And I can't even tell you how big of a difference like training has done for me. It's been really incredible. And this song, I wouldn't have been able to sing it how I did and sing it on stage how I do without the training that I've been doing. It's really awesome. This is an awesome sentence to say. We should stick together. We kind of played with like, we should stay together, we should play together or fly together, birds, flock birds together. Birds of a feather flock together. And stick together just rolls off the tongue in a very satisfying way, so. This was another like, whoever is right wins with me and Phineas. What I love about the way that we work is it's not really like, how competitive. do you? Yeah, we're not really competitive like that. Like it's really like best idea wins. And 
with this, I wanted it to be. Might not be forever, but if it's forever, it's even better, and I don't know what I'm crying. And Phineas was like, it's better if it goes, it's even better. I forgot all about that one. We overthought this sort of simple song so, so hard. So hard. Yeah, we kept getting lost in the maze on this song. This, I've never, we've, I don't think we've ever overthought another song more. So glad it's popular. God. <laughs> it's such a pain. I was, there was like a period where we were considering not putting it on the album, but thank God we didn't do that. I see a place I want to mark up. Might not belong. Those are two different words. Might not belong. This was our big, long lyrical puzzle. We rewrote that what? so many times. We had different rhythms. We had this whole other part. Yeah, it's true. This. We didn't get that for seven months. I'll love you till the day that I die when we hadn't set it up right made no sense to us. And then it was about setting up that line right. Right. We kept saying, it's like, how do you make I'll love you till the day that I die a punchline? Not just sort of like saccharine and meaningless. I know that I, I'll love you till the day that I die shouldn't be meaningless, but it felt a little meaningless before we got, might not be long, like not necessarily gonna live another 80 years, but I'll love you till the day that I die, even if that's a few days. So that was our big setup. We had like different rhythms, different melodies. For a while it was, I know I should be terrified. What, of what? We had like some like, I don't miss the way it was. Da -da 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 -da. And those also didn't feel truthful and they didn't feel like they were building to anything. And we also wanted to set up the I love you till the day that I die because it did feel kind of empty. So yeah, let's do the chorus. Let's see what happens, eh? Oh, beautiful, look at that. <laughs> I loved doing that. You guys killed that. <laughs> Fixing stuff immediately. <laughs> yeah. I just want context, because that's technically, even though it's the last line of the pre-chorus, it's the start of the chorus, so. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now we can play the chorus. <laughs> I love you too. thought about how the end of the pre is the beginning of the chorus. Billy and I spent well, a lot of time in the, the studio thing. being like, like I'll go, I think you should re-sing that chorus line. And Billy goes, okay. And then I play it and she goes, this is what you think the chorus is? That's a big part of like A big art. thing. Birds have a feather is the pre-chorus. And then I don't know what I'm, is the chorus. And this is kind of like this, post -chorus. this is like the post-chorus second half of the chorus. But it's the same deal. But it is, it doesn't really matter, does it? We literally hated mm. so much when we made it, didn't we? Also, um, I was singing it like, like, die! I was like very, it was very um, guttural. <laughs> I, we have the demo of that version and it's really tough. It's tough. I listened to it recently and I was like. It sounds like a horn. But she did a bunch of beautiful harmonies on those dies too. I love me some harmonies. So funny, we play you these things, and we're like, yeah, there's a little bit of that. Seven hours. I have like such a love for second verses. I feel like second verses, especially for us. All the best lyrics we've ever written. All the best lyrics we've ever written are in the second verse, weirdly. I added that sound bite of you like, oh, no, no, no. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> hang on. That's so awesome. Yeah. Let me pull that there's out. A, there's a vocal chop. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it actually... That's awesome. <laughs> Do you have the original sound? That's the original sound. What does that mean? What am I saying? Cause. 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 Cause the stranger. <laughs> Wait. That's amazing. That's from getting older. Yeah. Guys. Cause the stranger. That. That's awesome. So that's the vocal from Getting Older, from Happier Than Ever, that came out. Our second album came out in 2021. But, but who would who ever would know? know. <laughs> <laughs> Part of my year of, <laughs> of crisis. <laughs> I was going to say, I really loved the second verse at the time because different from, I think, the rest of the song where I said it was kind of like I was writing what I wanted to feel, this verse was really how I did feel. You know, I want you to see how you look to me. You wouldn't believe if I told you. Like, you're so obsessed with the idea that you're this, you know, unaccomplished, ugly, you know, whatever somebody might talk down about themselves and think. And it's like, you don't even know how you look to me. Like, in my mind, you are beautiful, special, talented, it's not actually possible to see ourselves how somebody else sees us, but if it was, you literally wouldn't believe it. Like you, if I could give you my view of yourself, view of you, you would you would be so shocked and so stoked because it's awesome. You would keep the compliments I throw you instead of discarding them, discarding them, them and, sh and just keeping this wall around. You would take them in and agree with them, and then tell me it's a bit. That one's interesting to me because I feel like people kind of hear it in a different way. For me, that's me being like. Tell me you're joking. Like, tell me that it's a bit that you don't see how amazing you are. Say you want to quit. Don't be stupid. That I wasn't referring to a relationship. I was referring to like one's, you know, career and job and someone who's just really doubtful of themselves when they have so much talent. I think there's like a note here. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's super small. I love. I actually love this little part. Pretend this is here, probably. Yeah. <laughs> This one goes down a half, half step, step, which is really cool. Uh, I think it's no. No. This, I tried a lot of different stuff with because I didn't know if it was good enough to just hold it. So I tried a lot of like, don't be stupid, or like stupid, or, and none of the, it was kind of like, so it was kind of performative. Lots of new lyrics to <laughs> to Ray. These are the lyrics that we rewrote when we rewrote the whole chorus, the entire chorus, because we were freaking out, really freaking out. So we rewrote the chorus, and that was the part we heard before. So the I don't know what I'm crying for, and now we go to the belt. You want to go for it right now? Try to do no, it. Absolutely not. But you could play the isolated vocal. Ah. And I remember like coming home and playing it for my parents at the time. Both of them were like, <laughs> it was so loud. I mean, it's literally shouting, I'm shouting. But that second to last note was all I was aiming for. And then as I was doing it, I was like, it would be really cool if I went one more. And I did it and it was awesome. moments of this song 
that felt really good the whole time, and one of them was that, that outro. That outro. It feels very happy. It feels like. And sad. It feels both. We started the song on, I think, February 16th of 2023. We didn't finish it until. It's like literally January of the next year. <laughs> yeah. So long. Really a long time. I think sometimes you feel more ownership over something if it took you a long time. Like yeah. Sometimes when stuff happens really quickly, you're like, wow, I feel grateful for that, but you might not feel like the sort of sweat that went into it. Well, I am incredibly happy and proud of this song. We've figured it out and we like it and people are understanding it. really understanding it and loving it. And it makes me really, really happy. It just went platinum which is so fast and in insane. I thought this was my flop song. I, we, we thought maybe this was the flop album, but we loved it. There I go. Nice. Thanks everybody. 